Thank you so much for joining us on episode number 26 of Lunch Out Loud Ottawa. My name is Nick Matruski. And I'm Andrew Miller. And of course, we're the podcast that features the people, places, events, and music of Ottawa that make this such an exceptional city. Uh, of course, thank you so much for sharing our podcast with your, your friends and like us on iTunes, Facebook, and keep people listening. We have an awesome show today. We're at the offices of Sam Bat out in Carlton Place. Ooh, ooh. So before we get to know them, please check this out. was in a track called Sisters from A Tribe Called Red. It was featuring Northern Voice. And of course, you'll see them at Blues Fest on July the 10th. They'll be headlining one, uh, the River Stage, or not the River Stage, the Black Sheep Stage at 9.30 p.m. So you're going to want to check them out. They actually just left today for uh, a, a bunch of uh, big festivals in uh, Europe. So they'll be playing the Brighton Festival, which is a huge festival in England this weekend. They also just got back from a tour in the United States where uh, the Rolling Stone wrote about them. Uh, several other uh, news outlets in the United States are taking uh, a huge liking, and of course we are as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've been blowing up. I mean, they had, they had uh, was it Diplo that tweeted about them last really? year around this time? And uh, yeah, a couple of other big uh, artists, uh, you know, they've gotten a lot of respect over the last uh, year or two. So, And of course they, they uh, host Electric Pow Wow uh, once a month at... Babylon, I was there this past weekend as well as the one before. It's just an incredible time. You're playing great beats. Uh, everybody's just having a fun time dancing, and uh, you can't go get wrong with that. So we're going to listen to some more of those tracks in, in a bit. But first, let's get to know our guests from Sambad. We're here with the founder, the present owner, and of course the production uh, operator, Alfred. Nice to thanks for coming on, guys. Hey, our pleasure. <laughs> All right, and, and like we do with uh, many of our guests, uh, we want to get to know your, who's oh. calling you. That's what we're saying. <laughs> Who is calling you? <laughs> like, <right. laughs> it's Manny no. Ramirez. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Manny Ramirez for about. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Alfred. So no, I guess. But I'm in the oh, of hold an on. Interview, so I we'll just pause this. All right. <laughs> so. So Sam, why don't you tell us a, a bit about your uh, situation in Ottawa? What's kept you in Ottawa so long? What are some of your favorite uh, hot spots out here? Well, Ottawa has uh, become a has become my home. I came here from the prairies of South Dakota. So if I well, oh, if awesome. you want to know if I've heard potluck uh, and powwow dancing, I certainly have. <laughs> uh, I would, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a, it's a, an amazing thing to witness. But uh, from the glass, grasslands to the woods of Ottawa, that happened in 1972. I came up here to uh, uh, exercise my GI Bill and go to Carleton University, which oh, wow. I did. Uh, and I've, I've remained here ever since. Wow. And, uh, but uh, Carleton did teach me that this is a town, Ottawa is a town of libraries, and you can do ex ex extraordinary research in this town, equal to anywhere else in the world. And I mean mm -hmm. London, England, and Washington, D.C. Uh, you have patent libraries here. You have everything that created the bat company was in this town. And, oh, that's great. And uh, so uh, if I hadn't done the research, there wouldn't be a product. Really? Yeah. And you use the Carlton Libraries and all the other resources? Yeah, I, I use the Ottawa Public Library to read about the baseball, the physics of baseball is a book there. Um, I used the transportation library when it came to figuring out the densities of the wood, which would be equal or equivalent to ash, and that was in those charts and, and uh, uh, books. It was actually on a book on building bridges, wooden bridges. Oh, wow. And they had the density. So uh, uh, you, you, 
if you look, you'll find it. If you put it that way. Incredible. You know, so, so the engineering aspect was uh, made very easy. But, and also, in the early days, the uh, the Wood Council was in Ottawa. They moved, have since moved that to Quebec City, which I personally find kind of tragic, but that's the way yeah. that's how it's crumbled. You know? That's why you can't help governments. But, uh, <laughs> but, but, uh, but uh, yeah, this has been a phenomenal town to be in for, yeah. for research. And, and the environments all around, and like Carlton Place, it's, yeah. uh, it's turned out to be an excellent place to do the production from. And you're, you're always trying to kind of match the size of the building to the output of what you're putting out. And I would say Arlene has hit the nail on the head in doing that, um, and you know, honing and refining, taking over from where, from all the things I didn't get done. <laughs> she has done a great job. Yeah, oh, that's fantastic. Absolutely. What are some other, uh, you know, restaurants or you know, other? Uh, well, you know, hey, you've been in Ottawa for a while, so you must have seen some come and go in town. So. Oh yeah. Well, they. I, I was a residence at the Mayflower on Cooper for <laughs> years. Yeah. And it was in the north. That's right, it's right near the library when you're doing your research. You just walk out there. It's it was more, more important. That's, uh, that's Cooper and Elgin, right? Yeah. Yes. Cooper yes. Mayflower, yeah. yeah. But uh, more important, it was the north window where the question was asked, uh, we're breaking too many bats, why don't you do something about that? And if I hadn't been asked that question by Bill McKenzie, who was also an inmate of the Mayflower, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Probably still is. Uh, we, you know, that he he was a scout for the for the expos at the time. And, oh yeah. Uh, so it, it was a baseball scout question, and if it hadn't come from, if I hadn't been asked the question, I wouldn't have known to do the research. You were you always a baseball fan growing up? Then coming from South Dakota. Well, you know, everybody plays baseball. I mean, and in South Dakota, everybody plays everything yeah. because it's just too small. Uh, you need I, everyone to play, otherwise there's no team. Well, yeah, you do. And I, I, and I think uh, I got sent out to third base because they thought, well, at least he'll stand there, and if he does catch the ball, he stands a chance of getting it to first base. I was slightly tall for my age, or for the area. And I, I, I probably threw it in, in, in the pitcher's fear. I'm sure he just hit the ground, and I started to throw something towards first base, but... Anyway, uh, my baseball career sort of started in third grade and ended shortly after. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Was there a specific team that you were cheering for back when all the bats were breaking? Or uh, I've always been a fan of the Kansas City Royals. I was born oh, in Sorry City. to hear about uh, that. There you go. Yeah. But, uh, they, <laughs> sorry to hear about that. Spoken they, like a true Tiger fan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sorry to hear uh, But, uh, you know, that's just where the family lived. That's where my grandparents were from. So... Uh, I have fond memories of Kansas City, still do. Uh, uh, so it's all, it all works out, you know. It's, oh, that's you know great. Fan loyalty is a great thing if you can afford it. If you, go, if you can go to every game, sit in the best seats, you're, you're a good fan. Go for, go for it. Not even the best seats. <laughs> my favorite is standing room. So. Yeah. Oh, that's great. What about, uh, what about yourself, Alfred? Uh, you've been in Ottawa, born and raised? or? Uh, no, no. Actually, I was born in Europe and only came to Canada oh, in... Mid sixties, oh, okay, and then eventually ended up in Ottawa with my family in the mid seventies. I moved to Ottawa, okay. So I've been here ever since. Oh, that's great. So how long have you been? Uh, you've been a part of Sambat then? Uh, I think seven and a half years, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, that's great. That's a great story. How you got your start too? And yeah, that's you, great. another hot spot in Ottawa that you like, I think, and uh, yes. you might have been been there for a bit. But yes, well, no, actually, well, I I did work at the Prescott Hotel, but that was yeah. many many moons ago. Oh, okay. Uh, when I uh, started at Sandbat, I just uh, sold a business that I had oh, for okay. 13 years and was looking for something new to do and wandered by the door and Sam invited me in. I had known someone that had worked there prior to that and uh, decided to stay on. That's great. Was it a woodworking type business that you owned before? Or no, not, not in the least. I owned no, a I'm... beer and wine business. Oh, well, there so you there must be some <laughs> woodworking involved in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> or something. I'm not sure, but here. There, there is a common theme. It all, theme it all seems to through. go back to there, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the common theme. So, how did Sambad? Like, where did you start uh, Sambad out of, and and where? Like, how did we end up in Carlton Place? Well, you're, you're talking a long story of history of factories. Uh, I started out in the garage at my house on Bayswater Avenue in a 17 and a half by 17 and a half square mm-hmm. bar, uh, shed. Uh, the basement was the paint area. 
the dining room table was yeah. uh, marking the bats. Uh, the kitchen was shipping and receiving and, and taping <laughs> until supper, and then we cleared everything up, and it went into the living room. Uh, and uh, there's someone I know who is an angel in this. <laughs> and, Denise Gova. <laughs> And uh, and she still tolerates my shenanigans. So I'm, <laughs> I'm somewhat lucky, I think. But uh, but yeah, the from from the from the the shed, the first the first uh, I would say official factory was probably Rochester Street, the old Antrim Hotel. The old Antrim Hotel. Yeah. Now you have to go back in history to figure out where the Antrim Hotel is. <laughs> it's on Rochester Street and popular, and it is now a rooming house. But I, I, I have been doing a little bit more research on the uh, the Pres Preston area of Ottawa. There's such a great history of where the logging companies and how Le Breton was mm -hmm. such a more hotbed, and then that they had the longest uh, building in North America as well when they were making the... Uh, Transatlantic Pipeline. Yes. So, and then the, of course, the big brewery uh, that was there in the Underground Railway, that there's still people are still obsessing over finding the uh, the treasure of the Underground Railway. So it's <laughs> it's such an interesting area. Yeah, I'm not so sure about the Underground ra Railway, but I do know the tram line used to go across the bridge to Hall and back over yeah. the Mackenzie Bridge back to Ottawa, and that's why they never needed to dig a tunnel. Very right. smart, or old. Uh, politicians and grandfathers <laughs> <laughs> well there they did there was uh, about a hundred years ago he did uh, try to make the uh, the long uh, like speed rail kind of yeah but that was struck down a hundred years ago so <laughs> well, there's there's a lot, a lot of history about the, but yeah they had a wonderful wonderful streetcar system at one time yeah okay so from Rochester you went to uh, Rochester you your, and how about quantity of bats I mean obviously at your home you're only building we do oh, on a basis. Yeah. 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 yeah, and you basically and you outgrow all these buildings. You, you do. I mean, uh, I, I think out of the house one year we came close to uh, seven or eight thousand bats. Oh year. Jesus! Mm -hmm. Yeah. And <laughs> how I mean, many how many players would that be for? Because you're um, try to focus on a, a bunch of players. Well, back then there was quite a few. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I mean. Uh, it, but forty percent of all of MLB hitters were using. Yeah. Sandwich. Oh wow. Yeah. You have to remember there was yeah. no maple up to that point. No. Yeah. So when maple caught on after Sam started the first ones, the only option if you wanted to use maple Bag was of steel. Sam's yeah. bats. They and shared. They shared those bats like candy bars. Yeah. Oh wow. So you were the first manufacturer of maple. Oh yes. Baseball yes. bats. The inventor yeah. of the maple bat. The original wow. maple bat corporation is actually yeah. the name. The name of Sam bat. Oh, there you go. So very much ground changing. Well, we know that the maple is the best wood to use. So, I mean, I know for other industries too, like even uh, take skateboarding industry. I know that the yeah. majority of skateboards are all maple wood as yeah. well, yeah. and it's always been the best wood. So, yeah. anyway, go on. So you're pumping out about seven, eight thousand bats out of your house, and you go over to Rochester Street here. Yeah, and I think in Rochester we had uh, close to fourteen or fifteen, That's something, right. something like that. Uh -huh. And then uh, it w the pressure was even greater. And uh, I I started leasing a building in Gatineau, okay, and uh, which was thirty thousand square feet. So I went from oh, wow. seventeen by seventeen to yeah. ten thousand square feet to thirty thousand square feet. Oh, jeez, not much time. And and uh, uh, I don't know. Then then we started creating competitors. And, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think there's thirty of them now. Thirty competitors now. Now, were they all? Uh, are they all from Canada getting their maple from Canada, or they're, they're finding better, trying to find better maple elsewhere? Well, we, we honestly don't know what they do well. <laughs> 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 they're no Sam Matt, That's for sure. It's, it, it, it's, I, I think they talk about us more than we talk about them. True. No, well, that's good. True. No. Absolutely. So we're just going to take a quick break now, and then we'll be right back with. Uh, with Sambat. So we're going to listen to one more song from uh, Tribe Called Red. This one's called NDN Steaks featuring Sitting Bear and we'll be right back.
right, so we'll just get back to uh, thanks for listening. That was Tribe Called Red, uh, NDN Steak. So we're here with Arlene, Sam, and Alfred from Sambat. So now, after they were at Rochester, we moved to the uh, larger location out in Gatineau. That's correct. And, and how was that uh, ordeal moving out there, and how did we get to Carlton Place? Moving factories is... Uh... Expensive? Expensive, a couple weeks of time, and uh, yeah. then you wonder what you forgot. <laughs> um, so I, I uh, you try to avoid it, but at the same time, you, you know, every, you know, you close one door, another opens. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so you, you find, and Arlene sort of had to find a place that was a little more inhabitable. It was okay for me, but I'm, I'm, I can be rough. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but. No, it, it, just, it just needed to happen. And then in terms of employees, and uh, yes, we over the years have, uh, uh, we, 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 like to, we like to have a beer at the end of the day. Uh, we've often uh, found each other, we know each other through our, through our evening life, perhaps. So, <laughs> so we, and as I say, uh, uh, maple's a great absorbent. It, uh, it, it, it dries us out during the day. <laughs> So, so and, 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 and I tell players, players will ask me, you know, why does a bag get too heavy? And I say, well, you know, it will steal coffee out of your cup. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, so it's, it's notorious for it. Anyway, uh, uh, I, I think in terms of the other part of history that your, your listeners may like to know about would be uh, how Joe Carter was one of the first players to use it. Because I remember you used to use the Cooper bat. Yeah, well, that was many years ago. But Joe, yeah, Joe was, was uh, yeah. the first time Joe used a sand bat, he hit a home run. No way. Oh, really? And that, that's a, that's what year was that? That would have been in 1997. Seven. Okay. Yeah, 1997. Yeah. So, yeah. so, uh, so uh, he instantly, he's, he's the best bat salesman I'm aware of. Yeah. yeah. Literally. And, and the word on the field has been high ever since. Uh, uh, Carter's of achievements. And and uh, his batting statistics did not go down in his lifetime. His he, his ability to field did. Uh, yeah. And, but and he he also introduced me to Barry Bonds, and and the Bonds relationship was is still fascinating. It's just absolutely interesting. Uh, but uh, even in Barry's home run, seventy run home run, uh, I was at a veterinarian convention with my father in Boston. Yeah. And we were watching the balls bounce off the fence back in the, the, the dog days of August, right? And uh, uh, I kind of get this call, and, and and I say, Barry, you've done the work, but the bat's too light. You, 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 it needs to be heavier. The ball's not going to go. You know, I, he knew. He, I didn't. I just said it's too light. You've done the work. And all I hear is a silence on the phone. I didn't know if I had a customer or not after that. <laughs> <laughs> but now I have a couple of bats from the 73 series that are signed by Barry, so I think uh, he forgave me. And his father confirmed that he needed the way. You, you also uh, have a good friend. Good old Bobby. Yeah, he is a good friend. And, he is, and Barry is a good friend, because oh, yeah. uh, of yes. course there's a lot of stories about him uh, in the yeah. head dog outs and everything, right? Uh, Sam breakfast in his home. No way! Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I've stayed in Barry's doghouse. How's, how's, Barry, how's Barry doing these days? I think he's quite calm, quite relaxed, and just getting on with life. I, I, I don't, I haven't talked to him in a couple of months, but uh, he's, he's, he's doing fine. Another one of your, your major uh, users is uh, Jose Canseco. I was showing you the tweet where he put it, he was selling his books on correct. eBay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and, and Jose... Uh, I, 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 maybe I know the bad boys of baseball, but they sure can hit. <laughs> you know, it's, it's all you can say about it. I mean, Jose is a great hitter. I mean, I, I watched him hit a ball out of, out, of the, out of the Blue Jay Stadium, and I swear to God, that ball never dropped. You know, <laughs> and it hit the grill yeah. uh, in the hotel at the opposite end of the field. Hit the grill. Alfred has just uh, made up a special bat for Jose. Yeah, we had a request. Oh, really? He's back in town for the um, home run for autism. Yeah, how, how does he, he keep coming to Ottawa? Is well, he just a great uh, relationship with uh, you guys, or I, a great relationship with, or he's, well, he I, just I, wants to get his bats here. Maybe <laughs> one of both. But he, there's a, a local chap, um, Evan Malamud. Evan Malamud, who started it, and uh, he just was looking around for someone to 
a name. Yeah. yeah. And he's a baseball fan, a baseball player, and he uh, sent out emails to everyone, and he sent one out to Jose. Really, I don't think there were large expectations. Mm-hmm. And Jose immediately got back to him and said, well, give me a date. And then he was on the spot. He had to get a date. So he got back to him, get a date, and just uh, well, serendipitous, it worked out. So he was in last year, and we, uh, yeah, yes, we make bats for him, yeah. mm-hmm. and uh, which is nice. He used a, he used our star bat for in his games, and he also used it for the home run derby. Yeah. And he uh, so this year he has a new idea. I don't know if it's Evans or if it's Jose's, but apparently somewhere in the past, uh, Babe Ruth hit a home run with a. 54 ounce bat. Oh, now, it, this okay. is their history. I haven't really looked at it. And what's but it, what's I was what's asked to make a 55 ounce bat. Okay, so for those that know, don't know, myself included, what's a normal bat weigh then? Probably in the area of 31, 32. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's a monster. Jose's got some big arms on him, though, at least. He is a big, he is a yeah. big man. But having said that, oh. I'm, it stretched us to make this bat. I mean, oh, yeah. We had to find the heaviest piece of wood that I've ever used, wood that we normally would just yeah. laugh at, disregard, yeah. and then make the dimensions huge, mm-hmm. so it is a massive, huge bat, and having said that, once we finished it, it ended at 55.2 ounces, so oh, wow. we just made it, now the rest is up to him, you can swing so, it. So, <laughs> so when, is, when is the date for that, uh, do you know the date offhand? Uh, I do not, I believe it's sometime in... I think, is it July the 6th, is it that? could be. Sometime, sometime in July, okay, well, we'll dig that up so people can watch that. for autism. Home yeah, there was a very good turnout last year, and it's a worthy cause. Is that at uh, Link Stadium? Or? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Is Champions oh, yeah. for Baseball, or Chance for Baseball, going to be in Davy Gurley? Yes, they'll be, be involved. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's what the event he was, I think we're getting him on in July, too, so we're going to talk about okay. that event then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you think okay. about the baseball in Ottawa? We're missing, we have no, this year well, we have nothing, and we're looking for the double-A team. I've, I've always been cautious, because... You have to realize I, I worked 23 years for the National Arts Center. I've been in the live entertainment industry in this town for a long time. And I've often said uh, Ottawa needs a czar of entertainment mm-hmm. because there's too much, uh, too much, too many free gigs going on. And it makes it very hard for anyone and everybody else to compete at a, at a professional uh, level. And, and, uh, until that's corrected, it's just going to be hard to establish baseball in this town, I think. But that's my personal opinion. So someone that's dedicated full-time to, to look to, out for you know, the citizens of Ottawa. Because baseball always wants to put on something on on, the, on Canada Today. Yet Canada Today, there's all kind, there are millions of events going on yeah. Canada yeah. Day, you know, And most of them are free. So it's very hard to say, spend $10 on it to Lance Park. You know. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, just a fact, I think. But uh, but on the other hand, uh, there there is a solid community of people who like baseball. Mm-hmm. It's a small cadre core, and uh, at one time they they did get a lot of people to come out and see mm-hmm. see the see the the old team. The Lynx when you know, when, when Montreal was the, uh, the home. Yeah, and and that is that achievable again? I mean, well, it will take hard work. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, at present day, uh, how are how are you, are you looking to expand more? Are we looking to because you were telling yeah. me earlier that you're you're looking at pick, it's individual. How many bats are you putting out now? I yeah. mean, you started it. We're definitely looking to expand. Okay, uh, we're the official baseball bat of Australia. I saw that. Yeah, uh, we're uh, all over uh, Europe and uh, Mexico. Uh, we're expanding again in Korea, Japan. Uh, Japan. Um, Japan will be a big one, I guess. Yeah, Japan exactly. And Korea, Into be... also other products and other uh, wood derivatives uh, as an uh, offshoot also. What other so products are you looking at? We supply some things to Lee Valley and, and that sort of okay. thing, mallets and all sorts of different other mm-hmm. other implements. So, well, because um, you must have a bit of wood left over. Uh, oh, yeah. We've got, lots of, <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> We've got lots of wood. <laughs> we have residual wood. Yeah, yeah. 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 Which, no. yeah. We, we buy uh, veneer-grade logs, so... Uh, you know, top quality lumber and, and only a portion of that is able to be to make a, a top quality baseball bat. So yeah, there are lots of wood uh, derivatives that uh, that we can capitalize on. 
Oh, where, that's great. Where does most of the wood come from? We do not say. Okay. Ooh, mm-hmm. top secret. Oh. Yeah, because oh. everyone wants to know We don't know even that. know if it's from we've, yeah. we've got 30 competitors. Oh, they yeah. want to know what lot, what. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> of course. What, of course. Amazing. Incredibly no, competitive. No, they they come from the Ikea, Ikea, <laughs> yeah. Ikea desks. Yeah. There you go. So, about, so back to numbers about what are you putting out now? Around 20. Around 20,000 a year? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So what do you put out now, on that? Well, we're now into Dick's uh, Sporting Goods in the States also. Okay. Uh, Sport Shelly of California, uh, Team Express Online, um, uh, JustBadStock.com. We've got uh, you know, a litany of, of uh, people lining up to, uh, to have the product. So we're in that, that top tier of uh, the best product in, in the world for, for this uh, industry. So many of the bats are, you know, they, they, they break and splinter during the games now. Are, those are not... Those are other competitors, bats or well, all bats be. will break. Yes, all bats they, will yeah, break. They will break if they're not used properly. Yeah, and it, it, it is so user dependent. But it, uh, to tell you the range of you, nor, uh, uh, maple bat will normally last a month, but uh, we've had rogues last a year. Uh, extreme good, and these guys hit. These are professional hitters, and and they're legendary. So so you you run the gamut, but it, but if if it's hit wrong, like Q, Q-tipped, straight on the tip, mm-hmm. it'll split in two in a second. And, and, and it's only as good as it's made, to be quite frank. I mean, you can get 10 guys using the same, you know, give them 100 pieces of wood and ask them to make bats. And because Sam was the first and we've been doing it much longer than anyone else, mm-hmm. there are tricks to the trade. There's understanding the wood, there's understanding the grain, and when you make it, you can make the breakages much less and so there there's there's another key key element here in 2008 when when there was a lot of maple breakage on the field yeah uh our competitors were cheating with soft maple which Uh, is 20 percent uh less less uh dense dense. Mm -hmm. so it's it's lighter and Mm -hmm. and less strong and in the hands of a pro yes that that has never been brought out Well, you heard it here first. What <laughs> other types of wood are used for bats then? If you know, besides the maple, I heard ash was something that uh, they used yeah. back in the day. And a- ash is, was the traditional wood for bats okay. yeah. for, for hundreds of years until maple came out. Now the majority of the wood bats out there, I guess, the majority is maple now. That's yeah, in the major leagues, yeah, sixty yeah. seventy percent. Yeah, they, okay. they do not fool around. Anymore. Yeah, there's some birch, a very small percentage, and then there's ash still as well. Okay. When if you do have a player that you uh, that you're Putting a lot of bats too. Do you ever go? Okay, come on. We got to work on your. We got to work on your swing. Your. Like, <laughs> yeah. You take them to the yeah, batting you, cage. You take them to the Sam. You hang take on, them to the batting cage. You can call them. <laughs> <laughs> Get me Cabrera on the phone. Yeah. Well, who are some of the uh, the big names that are that are currently playing that uh, that you're providing bats to now? I guess. Um, Miguel Cabrera. Miguel yeah. Cabrera and Ryan Braun are probably the two Jeez. most Carlos well known. Gonzalez, Carlos uh, Gonzalez. Alfonso Soriano. Yeah. I mean. The, yeah, there's a, there's a large. I mean, uh, we, we tend to have. After my boy. I don't know how it worked out, but we tend to have. The on, best of the best. It seems. Yeah. <laughs> it seems. On any given team, you can say the best hitters got a sound. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. He'll be used. So then it becomes a matter of Except keeping them happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, there well, was a day when that was the case. There was a day when Jose yeah. Bautista was using the same bats. His statistics are more. And the statistics have gone down. They dramatically saying. since he switched from sandbags. <laughs> we will say no more. <laughs> we won't see any more. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for yeah, joining us, guys. guys. That was, that was a, great. a lot of fun. Thank a lot you. of. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, we can get this to a lot of baseball fans in the city. They can learn a little more, and and even fans that are not, don't even know about baseball, but just yeah. want to see a successful company in Ottawa that uh, is making a lot of people happy around the world and, mm-hmm. and bringing a great product to around the world. And hopefully, you stay here for the rest of the time and. You do or get expand. too big and need to get, uh, you know, move further. <laughs> no, no, stay Well, not move stay further, here. I mean. Expand to another part exactly. of Carlton Place. There you go. Carlton yeah, Place or Colton Golf. We're going to go back to the Do Rockies. you guys go to the Thursday Moose much uh, now you're over in Carlton Place here? Uh, or do you drive right back to town as soon as you're done? Well, I have a co-worker who lives in Carlton Place. A lot of us okay. live in, in Ottawa, but uh, I have a co-worker who lives in Carlton, and he has introduced me to the yeah. Thursday Moose. Yeah. I believe his friend... Owns it. So yeah, nice this friend. We have been there on occasion. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's Main good. friend. All right. Well, we'll just go over. There's just a, a few events. It's a long weekend coming up. Big week, uh, long weekend plans. Yeah. Anyone? Cottage. 
cottage guys. That's, that's the first. It's the best cottage week. Yeah, yeah. Cottage, week yeah. of the year. I'm going to Nashville. Have you, have no, you ever no, been to Nashville? Be very cool. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. should go. Though there is the the walk for guide dogs this weekend oh, in Carlton Place. There you yes, go. Wonderful. on Saturday, which I will be participating in because we have uh, Wade Wilson on staff with a hearing dog. Yeah, and so that's happening cool, this Saturday. Cool, dog. Event. It is. Yeah, and he's very our nice mascot. Bert. Bert is our mascot yeah, in huh. the office. And he, <laughs> you warned us. Uh, <laughs> you warned Wade when we were coming in. That was really a lot of fun. So another thing that's going on, we got the Ottawa Rock Lottery. Have you heard of the Ottawa Rock Lottery? No. 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 So it's it's 25 musicians from Ottawa, so it's a, a number of bands. Mm-hmm. A lot of them have been on our show, including uh, Good Luck Assembly, members mm-hmm. from Good Luck Assembly, members from Loon Choir, uh, the Wicked Mercy, Fevers, that's going to be there. So a lot of bands that are going to be at Blues Fest. But they uh, they are formed into, like, so they get members from their band, they form into other bands, and they have 24 hours to form a new band. Wow. And then make a twenty to thirty minute set. Wow! So then you, it's eight p.m. is on the Saturdays when they all get together to perform concerts with their their new band. So it's a no room they stay for up all night there. No, no, yeah, no, no room for you. So it's a really uh, it's, up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, an exciting event, and it all goes towards uh, the Ottawa Food Bank. So it goes towards a good cause, okay. and that sells out every year. So that's an excellent thing. You got Electric Tulip. Uh, that's on Thursday night tonight. At uh, City Hall, uh, it's with W and W. It's two Dutch DJs, so it's fitting for a tulip festival. <laughs> so you know the dance acts outside of City Hall is always a fun time. Uh, Sunday night you have Game Three for the Sens. Hopefully, uh, hopefully they win uh, Friday. Mm, yeah, that'd be good. Hope. Good to see. It was. <laughs> I sold you ten bucks from the weekend. Yes, you do. You must. Have. <laughs> that Boston Toronto series was fantastic. That was the worst. I saw that last minute and a half coming, and I knew we were Boston was still going to win it. You know. Beautiful. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Sorry for your loss. But. <laughs> and uh, so next week, join us again. We have uh, Jeff Hunt from the Ottawa Sports and Entertainment and Gaming. Uh, so we're going to be talking lands down. The this, the uh, new Ottawa football team is looking mm-hmm. like the Red Blacks. They released the logos for that. Mm-hmm. Leak the logos. We don't know if that's going to be it for sure. Maybe he'll let us know and break it down there. But uh, have a great weekend, everyone. Yeah, you too. We'll finish off. One last song from Tribe Called Red. We got uh, bread and cheese featuring Black Bear. All right, so see you next week.